In the box we have the user manual to help you set it up and a card with the chance of winning either a 64GB microSD card or a £20 Amazon voucher, a 3-pin power pack with a USB port on top, 3 wall plugs and 3 screws, the Wi-Fi antenna and the Google CCTV camera. On the top is the connector for the Wi-Fi antenna which just screws down into place. The USB cable is attached directly to the camera and it's non-replaceable so it's best not to break this because it'll just be useless. There's an Ethernet port if you prefer to hardwire it rather than using a Wi-Fi connection. A speaker can be found on the back of the head and a microphone on the bottom for when you want to use a two-way audio and speak to people. On the other side of the head is a plate which is covering up a micro SD slot and a reset button. You can install a memory card up to 64GB and it must be a class 10 card. What you will notice is that there is a gap around the card slot and the reset button and if you accidentally drop your card in there then it's a bit of a nightmare to get it out. I feel it would have been much better if the hole was blocked off completely to prevent clumsy people like me from dropping micro SD cards in there. If you want to use a network lead rather than the Wi-Fi then there isn't much space to get both the Ethernet and the USB cable through the cutouts so the thinner your cable the better. The resolution is 1920x1080p and it has a 110 degree lens and our pan and tilt is 355 degrees on the horizontal and 110 degrees on the vertical. Setting it up with your mobile phone is a simple process so let's run through it very quickly. Scan the QR code on the side of the box, click on the URL, hit download the free app and install the Yi IoT app. Choose which language you want and click continue. Sign up with an account and hit the link in your emails to activate it. Sign yourself in and tap on the screen to add the camera. We're connecting through Wi-Fi so we'll hit the blue box in the middle. If you're connecting through the Ethernet cable then click on other ways to connect. Listen out for the two tone beep and once you hear it click on I heard the sequence. Click continue to let the app know your location. Select your Wi-Fi network and put in the password. You'll hear this horrible noise now coming through the app and this wants you to scan the QR code on your phone using the actual camera. It will now begin to pair, give it a name and we're all set up and we're able to live view and record. The standout features available in the app are being able to move the head direct from the app so you can get into your desired position, linking it up with an Amazon Echo Show which will allow you to view the camera direct from there, various cloud storage options so you can access footage from the cloud, these do come at a cost but you can save locally to a micro SD card if you wish. Sharing access to your camera with others if you want multiple people to monitor. Notifications on your phone if motion or abnormal sounds are detected. And the big one is the motion tracking feature which will allow the camera to follow a person or a vehicle if it detects movement. Checking out the footage during the day brings pretty underwhelming results. The image is not crisp and if you want to read license plates then it's going to be a bit of a struggle so it's best to use this camera in close quarters rather than trying to look from range which is what we're doing in this test. The motion detection is not too bad and does a decent job at tracking people and cars. It does get a little confused when multiple things are moving at once. Once it detects additional movement it tries to track that. We did have occasions where it would track an object and then it would completely turn around and focus on the wall behind but this didn't happen too often. Once it detects that there's nothing else to track it will go back to its original starting position after a few seconds. Motion tracking can be deactivated in the settings if you don't want to use it. Moving on to footage at night and it's quite a grainy picture that it produces. You can see there's people and vehicles moving about but it would be impossible to identify someone and this is shown when we go near the cars. The motion tracking works better when the large objects are moving but it did struggle to track us. The ghosting of the image is really high so you would be able to see that something's gone on but to actually put a picture to the face may be a bit of a struggle. We also had moments where it would pick up movement and the head begins to track but it didn't complete the track leaving the head out of the original position for a few seconds before moving it back to its original place. But it wasn't always like this and sometimes it did track fine so it could be that if a vehicle goes at a slow speed then it completes a track but if it is a faster moving object then it struggles so it's a little less consistent in the dark. We also had occasions where the head would just rotate 180 degrees to have a look at the wall behind and then it would go back to its original position. Maybe it was a bit cold and the movement lubed the joints up a little bit. Testing indoors still brings pretty grainy footage but it would be much easier to identify people. Movement looks fluent enough so it does an okay job. Just make sure that your Wi-Fi is strong enough as it will suffer from a lot of freezing of the image 
which is not what you want really from a CCTV system. Footage from inside at night isn't too bad, still some grain to the image, but I reckon this is probably the best scenario for the girls camera. The IR LEDs do a good job of brightening up the image, even though it does make the cat look like he's ready to cause some carnage. So let's test out the microphone and see what kind of audio you can expect. Here's an audio test using the ghoul's camera. We're approximately six feet away. We are indoors and it is quite echoey here as well. So if we walk directly underneath the camera, this is the best audio you're going to get because we literally can't get any closer to the microphone than what we are now. This is an outside audio test. We are talking at a normal volume. Um, can you hear our voice? Chances are you'll probably be able to pick up a little bit of wind noise as well. And any vehicles that go past you should be able to hear those as well. Well, this is the kind of audio you can expect from this camera when we're speaking outside. This is a quick audio test using the internal speaker on the Gauls camera. We are speaking directly to our mobile phone, so what you're hearing now is coming directly through that speaker. Moving on to connecting it directly using the cable rather than Wi-Fi, and, um, yeah, we couldn't get it to work. Do you know that you're being watched? That's it, put those ladders back. Have a good day. Bye bye.